as a pharma company or a biotech company, what we care about is the alternative hypothesis. We believe there is an effect. And so how large a clinical trial do we need to conduct in order to make sure we actually find that effect? And what we did last time was to describe the probability of a type 2 error, the probability of a false negative. And what we'd like to do as a pharma company or a biotech company is to minimize that. And so when you go through the analysis and calculate what that type 2 error is, you get this expression here, which when you invert for the number of patients you need in order to get a certain level of type 2 error, it's this expression here. So kappa is the alternative hypothesis. It tells you how many standard deviations away from zero is the treatment effect that you are hypothesizing under the alternative. Okay? So kappa is the strength of your particular treatment. For larger kappa, it means that you're farther away from zero that's a good thing. That means that you're getting a stronger treatment effect. The larger the kappa, the smaller the sample size you need in order to guarantee a certain type 1 or type 2 error uh, or a certain power. Power is the probability of rejecting the null, assuming that the null is false. So you can think of it as the probability that you're likely to get the drug approved, assuming that it actually is an effective drug. 80% is a ballpark number for what a lot of clinical trials use in terms of calculating their sample size. Sometimes they use 90%, sometimes a bit less, depends on the circumstances, but ballpark figure will use 80%. And if we use 80% as that type 2, uh, or 1 minus the type 2 error, or the power, then this is what you get in terms of the trade-off between the number of patients you need to get that 80% and the uh, particular alternative hypothesis. So let me just show you. We didn't get a chance to talk about this chart last time, so I'm going to go through it a little bit here. So this graph basically plots on the horizontal axis the number of standard deviations your treatment will give you away from the mean of zero. Okay, so in other words, this tells you how strong, how good your therapy is. If it's really a fantastic therapy, if it has a really huge treatment effect in extending life, reducing blood pressure, shrinking tumors, it's going to be a very big number. And the bigger the number, the bigger your treatment effect, the smaller the number of patients you need in order to get yourself a power of 80% or a, a type 2 error of, of 20%. So that's what I'm fixing in all of this. And these numbers actually translate into dollars and cents. If you multiply a cost of $36,000 per patient for a clinical trial, that's the average figure that we saw last time, and you multiply that by the number of observations, the number of patients you need, you can see that the stronger your treatment effect, the fewer patients you need, the less money you're spending. If you have a treatment that is two standard deviations away from zero. If you can extend life by two standard deviations, or if you can reduce blood pressure by two standard deviations, or improve kidney function by two standard deviations, then according to this calculation, you only need eight patients, four in the control group, four in the treatment group, and at a cost of $143,000 per arm, or about uh, $300,000. That's if it's two standard deviations. If more likely it's on the lower end, like it's a tenth of a standard deviation treatment effect, then you're looking at 1,500 patients in a clinical trial at a cost of about $114 million for both arms. So now you see how clinical trials can balloon. If you're looking for a small effect, you need a large patient population, and it gets expensive. So the key to thinking about these business issues is how strong is your treatment effect, and what kind of financing do you have, because the financing is going to dictate the kind of risks that you can take. Right? If you have a weak treatment effect and a small sample size, you're taking a big risk. If you've got a strong treatment effect and a big sample size, it's almost a sure thing. 
So scaling the risk and figuring out who's going to provide the money go hand in hand.